When you start using messaging, you'll notice that your application oftentimes updates the database and then needs to publish an event or message to the message broker. The problem is because the message broker and database are two different resources, you're gonna to need a distributed transaction. Here's how you can avoid the distributed transaction, but still atomically save to the database and publish a message. Hey everybody, it's Derek Comartin from CodeOpinion.com. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design in .NET. So if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. So I'm gonna show this kind of in a diagram situation and then I'll jump into some code to show it as well, is that you have your client and a database, your primary database, wherever you're storing your data, that could be a relational database, a document store, doesn't really matter. But the point being in your code, you're gonna be making that statement to save some data or change some data to the database. And then a separate step altogether is where you need to publish that message to your broker or um, to your message broker to a queue. The problem is because these are two different operations, what happens if you were able to save to the database, but then for whatever reason in code, some, you had a failure where you couldn't actually publish the message. This could be because for many different reasons, let's say that the queue is unavailable for whatever reason, um, or more likely you have a bug in your code that you get some exception that you run into for whatever reason, God forbid it's the lovely null reference exception. Maybe there's some edge case where the data that you're putting in the message, there's a failure there. So you've saved to the database, but you are unable to publish the message. Now this is a problem because if you have other services for whatever reason that need to know about that, that event, that message that's occurred because you made some state change, they're not gonna know about it. So things like oftentimes are used for cache invalidation, it's not gonna get invalidated and you're gonna have stale data. Or even worse, if you have long running processes where you need an event to occur to kind of kick off the next step, it's never gonna occur. So this is the problem. This is why you need a distributed transaction so you can atomically say these are all one thing, um, but we're gonna avoid the distributed transaction altogether. I'm gonna show you a different method with outbox pattern that a lot of libraries implement that you can just start using. To illustrate how the outbox pattern works is that you're ultimately gonna be publishing um, your event and your state change together in the same transa transaction as your primary database. So what that means is when you save something to your database, is step one, and then step two is you're actually, when you're publishing your message, and this is um, how the API works is gonna be dependent on the library, messaging library you're using. So if you're using brighter, or mass transit or end service bus, et cetera. They'll all implement this in the API slightly different, but ultimately what's happening is that the message that you publish, that you're seemingly publishing to the broker is actually getting saved to the database, a part of the same transaction as your state change. So then what happens is the, uh, the library in a separate process or thread will then fetch from the database the messages that haven't actually been published yet and then it will send that to your message broker or your queue. Once that succeeds and it was able to do so, it goes back to the database saying either deleting records or updating records that again, it manages about, okay, these are the messages that have been published. What this does, it allows you to publish a message technically um, and save your state change in one operation, one atomic transaction to the database. So when you're publishing your message, it's not immediately going to the message broker. You're actually saving it to the database with inside the same transaction as your normal state change. So I'm in the loosely coupled monolith project that I have, and I'm in a branch that I have um, that's using CAP, which is a messaging library that supports the outbox pattern. So here's code that I haven't implemented using it. And you can see, again, the issue is that we're making some state change. I'm just using entity framework here where I'm saving an order to the database. And then the problem is I'm publishing this message, but once I save this and it's been saved to the database, if there's a failure at any point here on out, I, I'm not gonna be able to publish the message. If there's some exception or this, fa this particular method call fails, whatever the case may be, it's not gonna happen if there's a failure after this point after we actually saved it. So the way CAP works is, again, it saves um, everything to the same database and you can do this by creating a transaction. So I'm gonna say transaction and then I'm gonna do DB context database. And the way CAP works is that it has a extension method for a begin transaction where you can pass it 
the publisher. So I'm going to give it the publisher here and then let's wrap this in it. So really what this has done now, and then when I do my transaction commit, So really what I've added is adding the transaction to the database and telling it to use the publisher to use that transaction. Instead of it publishing directly to, in my case, I'm using RabbitMQ, it's not gonna publish directly to RabbitMQ. It's actually gonna save um, a record to the database. All right, so I'm gonna just run this and then I'll show you the dashboard for CAP so you can see the message is publishing, as well as I will show you RabbitMQ so you can see that they're actually getting published there and then I'll, also show you the database itself that you can see how these tables get created by CAP. But again, it's gonna be dependent on the library that you're using. So I'm just gonna jump into Postman. I'm gonna fire off um, one request. I'm actually hitting my breakpoint here, so I'll just step through it. I'll remove it and then we'll fire off a bunch more. So we're starting our transaction. We're saving changes, but we're in a transaction. We're publishing our message, which has not gone to CAP yet. We're committing our transaction transactions all go into the database. So I'm going to fire off a few more here just so we can see that they're occurring. So now if I jump over to RabbitMQ, here we go. Here's the messages that are getting picked up right now. And then if I jump over to CAP, CAP has a little UI dashboard. And I can see these are the messages that I'm just publishing right now. So there's 21 and 22, 23, and 24. Let's jump back over 25. So here's all the new messages that I've been publishing. So if you look at your database, um, and I'm gonna, I just have my demo database here, there are two tables that have actually got created by CAP. So there's one called CAP Published and CAP Received. I didn't have to do anything with these. These were just automatically created when I started running the app. CAP kind of dealt with it. Obviously there's configuration where I had to give it kind of the connection string to where this was all set up but it dealt with the actual table. And you can see here uh, for the published events, these are the things that I've been publishing and it's marking if retries are occurring, when it was added, when it expires, so it can delete it because um, it's kind of like a temporary thing. And then the status of it, whether it worked or not. But here's all the messages that I've actually been publishing. So this is actually in my primary database along with my orders. So there's one issue with the outbox pattern that we need to address and we need to talk about is maybe you noticed it, or maybe you thought about this already, is that when you have this separate process or thread, a part of the library that you're using, which is fetching those records from the database, and then it is publishing those to your actual message broker queue, and then it has to go back and update the database for that record that said, hey, like this worked or it didn't work, whatever the case may be, is if it worked, but it couldn't actually update the record in the database, then that means that you're actually gonna end up republishing that same event to the message queue again, because it doesn't look like it actually was published. So this is an actual situation where you're kind of potentially, if there's failures um, with the publisher go, going back to the database to say, hey, it worked, you could be publishing the same event or message more than once. I'll definitely handle dealing with duplicate messages in a separate video. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And if you're into software architecture and design, make sure to subscribe. Thanks.